and we're back welcome back to toilet time tv the coveted show across the multifaceted universe the counterfactual truth where we get down to the brass taxes and where we get down to new elements things that only the mind can perceive but it makes your toes curl seen through a prism the fifth element the artemis papers the artemis prime truth seekers p pushers <laughs> <laughs> toilet time tv <laughs> welcome we're hoping everybody is ready for another jam-packed episode here in alice's bunker hole we'd like to thank again alice for being a hospitable host <laughs> We are still working on the map here on Bottom Earth. And once we have it all situated out, we will show you guys where we're located. But we are still trying to figure it out. Alice herself isn't sure either. We've been working on this for the last 397 years. So hopefully it'll be done within the next 640 years. It's very precise, but I think we can do it. I think we can hack this one. Well, it's just depending on your allocation of days, remember. If you still think... That a day is 24 hours. You guys are behind. My days are every three seconds. Like I've already gone through like four months. So a, a day to you is like a thousand years to uh, civilians. Sure. Every three seconds I go through a day. I can dig that. Yeah. So, you know, by the time somebody's working 24 hours, I've already put in work for like a, like 10 years. Wow. Well. Yeah, so I, I have that exponential growth. You're putting in that work. You yeah. can swear your name is Jorge. Well, we're pushing P. Yeah, a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. We're talking gallons. And that petroleum. You're going to literally drown in TP. Toilet paper. Hey, Alexa, do you like toilet paper? I don't have a favorite toilet paper, but I do have a favorite toilet paper joke. Why didn't the toilet paper cross the road? It was feeling wiped. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's great. Well, before we get started, we do have to flush the infamous toilet. So we do not get ridiculed by A-L-I-C-E. We're following our orders. This is uncomfortable. In three, two, one. Alexa, flush that toilet. Okie dokie. <laughs> We welcome to Toilet Time TV. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sweating? It looks like you're sweating for some reason. It's like, well, we better do this right. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I'm a little nervous. Uh, if you hear bombs going off, uh, don't pay any yeah, money. We're not to in it. Ukraine, yeah. but uh, there, there are sometimes things do happen down here in Bottom Earth. And anyways. Would like to welcome everybody to Toilet Time TV, where we bring you the facts. <laughs> That's facts. We release those documents. But anyways, we have a jam-packed episode for you guys today. We have things ranging from mining of helium-3 on the moon to whatever is on the mysterious tab of my colleague. And he has also brought his mysterious black book which he will dive more into later. So I hope you guys are anxious and waiting. Just some personal conspiracies of my own. Well, why don't you just go ahead and start us off with something on that mysterious tab. Bank of America just stole a bunch of people's money. Wednesday, uh, the 18th of January, people woke up to find that there was money uh, missing out of their banks if they banked with Bank of America. This blew up in social media, um, and it even got Elizabeth Warren to respond and call out Bank of America and Zelly because people who made Zelly transactions uh, were noticing the same thing. Now, apparently, uh, somebody who interviewed Bank of America and Zelly, uh, they said that... It's not that there's money missing. It's just delayed. 
So apparently Zelly, if you made any transactions with Zelly between the uh, 14th and 17th of January, <clears throat> 2023, then uh, you might be seeing a delay. And they apologize from the bottom of their heart, cross it, hope to die. So you have to trust them. It's not that they're greedy. They really care about you and yours. They're going to give you your money. So don't call Batman uh, and don't start robbing. Can we trust that Bank of America? It is actually a delay. We don't know yet because we're still waiting. Everybody's still in angst waiting for their money to return. One guy was missing $2,000. Another woman was missing over $1,000. <laughs> Somebody even commented uh, on TikTok saying that's why they always keep their account in the negatives. That way, if there's anything missing, then... That's you know, a smart plan. I know. Now, honestly, I relate to that. Do you keep your account in negatives? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, just hovering, you know. I, I, I always like to hover. Even when I sit on the toilet, I hover. That's the epitome of paycheck to paycheck. Yes. You know, it's interesting about that. I was seeing yesterday that the Simpsons predicted the Bank of America having this very problem in one of their episodes. Oh. That Bank of America would have a money shortage and people would be saying that their account money is missing out of their accounts. Well, it's because uh, Bank of America actually has a history of this. They did this apparently in 2020 as well. With Zelle and, payments? Yeah. Zell and Bank of America and Elizabeth Warren, who is not native. Now, maybe she's Chinese. We don't know yet. That's TBD. But she actually pointed this out that they have a history of this. So we shouldn't be shocked, but we should be upset. Did she posit a resolution to figuring out how to make sure this doesn't happen again? Well, she was just saying that uh, they need to respond and do something. They need to reimburse everybody for their troubles. You know, it's interesting that it happens to do it. This happens to deal with Zelle payments because you know the government decided to retract what it was initializing. I don't know if you guys have heard about it, which I'm pretty sure you guys have, because it affects just the common class. The the wealthy would never have this problem, but they were going to start enforcing instant payment processors like Zelle and Venmo to issue some type of 1099 to individuals who transferred more money than $600 in a year. And then you have to pay taxes on the money you sent. So it wasn't good enough that you already get tax on your income. Now you're going to have to get tax if you decide to give somebody more than $600. And this would only affect the people who are on the lower on the totem pole. The wealthy would never have this problem. And so it's interesting that they're trying to correlate this with Zelle payments, like maybe it has something to do with the ideas like we're just going to make Zelle payments more questionable because if we do, maybe we can get a demonization to instant transfer payments because you know why, like you guys have already heard us talk about. The Fed Now app is basically going to try to replace instant transfer payments like Zelle and Venmo, and you'll be able to do all the same things you use with Zelle and, and, and Venmo, the instant transfer payments, but you can all do it through the Federal Reserve app the Fed Now app. And so if they keep creating these problems with Zelle and Venmo and money becomes withheld constantly, people will start losing trust in them. And eventually the Fed Reserve, the Federal Reserve will come out and say, well, you have the same services, but you will never have to worry about, at least that's what they're going to propagate. You'll never have to worry about problems with payment because we're the Federal Reserve. Well, at least that, that might be why it's called Bank of America. Because, you know, Wells Fargo and all these other banks out there, they're not called banks of America. So they may be, you know, banks of different countries, but not America. And a bank of America is obviously uh, for the FedNow app because it's American. And not only that, they're going to have to change their name soon. Because another name to add to that list that we talked about last time, that university came up with this list of... Uh, harmful words america made it onto that list so soon we won't be able to talk about america yeah, as the university of stanford yeah we yeah. won't be able to talk about america anymore like we won't be able to say the word america it's going to be a disgrace what are they saying that we should replace america with because they that list always told you what you shouldn't say what's not what is not culturally appropriate and then they gave you a replacement word 
Uh, honestly, I can't remember, but I saw it earlier. Are they going to say indigenous? Uh, yeah, they can't say native um, because that's already taken. So maybe they can say Caucasian. Oh, U.S. citizen. Hmm. So instead of America, American, you have to say I'm a U.S. citizen. It's very corporate. Well, there is this whole idea of state nationalists where you can denounce your U.S. citizenship as being a part of the U.S. corporation under the U.S. code and establish yourself as a state national, as a natural person. How you like that? Da, da, da. Anyways, I just think this is interesting. If it's dealing with Zelle payments, this may be a collusion with the idea, because they've been running these pilot programs for the FedNow app since last year, and they're going to initiate in 2023 this year. That's what Jerome Powell said. He says, we are going to be initiating the FedNow app in 2023. And so there needs to be some kind of issue with the current existing infrastructure so then they can say, we have a more elaborate infrastructure and you can trust us more because literally the whole United States trusts the federal government. And since they run all the money, there should absolutely be no problems with the Federal Reserve. Well, at least Elizabeth Warren is on our side, just like Nationwide. Shout out to Nationwide Insurance. But my lawyer always said, don't mix a pit bull with a shih tzu. And that's something that Elizabeth Warren would never do. Well, thanks for that. Yeah, no problem. I mean, yeah. that's what I'm here for. Well, anyways, I, I do think this is a perfect, like if this is just the initiation of showing many coincidental incidences with instant pain methods like Zelle and Venmo, this will try to bring an initiative to people to say, we need a better system. And this is just going to bring an entry gate into the FedNow app. And of course, everybody will have the illusion that that's going to be more better, more stable. But once the Fed has all your control of your income, they can do whatever they want. They're basically going to have us by the ears. Yeah. And we're going to be grateful. We're actually going to like it. We're going to own nothing and like it. That's what they promise anyways. But yeah, these are just sliders. Shout out to BK. Well, that's interesting. What else you got? This uh, woman uh, brought her kid to a uh, art collection. And her son, he looks like he's three or four. On camera, he's over here hugging a statue that costs $132,000. And he knocked it over and it broke. So, of course, the mom is infuriated. She is just floored. Are they responsible? Are they going to have to pay for it? Well, yeah, you, you break it, you buy it. Well, a lot of these museums and stuff, they have insurance. No shirts, no shoes, no service. No insurance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank I mean, you for clarifying. You know yeah. Yeah, that's tough because, you know, of course, parents need to be responsible for their children, but things happen. I mean, that that is a real accident. Not to keep on hitting uh, Bank of America. I mean, you don't want to feed a dead horse. But if this woman is banking with them, who knows? Maybe they'll accidentally wipe her debt clean. The one person actually commented that on a social media account. They said, why, doesn't, why don't they accidentally make our credit balances disappear? Why is it always our you know, positive balances? And that's a little interesting. But yeah. anyway, back to the kid who probably this woman probably went home and beat her dog yeah it's a tough issue because you know one side you want to say well you know it's a real accident you don't want to you don't want to traumatize the kid to that extent and you don't want to put that kind of burden and weight on the kid because it literally was just an accident the kid doesn't know no better but there is a weight on the parent to be more cautious and monitoring of their children yeah that's a that's a tough one and one hundred thirty two thousand dollars that's not chump change yeah, no, but it's nothing like what another man is going through right now who is just, he is swole. His face is swole, at least one side of it. And he got like this from competing in those Russian competitions of slapping. So you see this guy take a slap to the face and then the camera zooms up on him 
and his face, you know, from this side of the face, he looks like this, you know, this really tough guy. But he turns his face, he's got like this little old man's face on this side. So he's like two faced. One side of his face is completely it looks like a mask, if I'm being frank. Yeah, you're talking about that slapping stuff. Yeah, slapping stuff. Yeah, those slapping competitions. Yes, the slapping competitions. Yeah. I saw that. The guy actually looked like after he got slapped, the other side of his face got deformed from the slap. Yeah. Yeah. He and was that, hurting. Yeah. What's interesting is is uh, Dana White, the guy who owns you, uh, the, uh, what's, what's that MMA thing? Bloodsport. John Claude Van Damme. He's like, rat, rat. Hey, Alexa, what does Dana White run? From projecttopics.org. Dana White is an American businessman and the president of Ultimate Fighting Championship, UFC, the largest mixed martial arts organization, MMA, in the world. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yeah, that's what's interesting is Dana White, he is now trying to establish basically like what he did with UFC, with the slapping competitions. He's trying to set up his own, like, federation of ultimate slappers and they're going to be slapping uh, slaps and uh so it's interesting he thinks it's so innovative and uh attractive or viral that he wants to put his money where his mouth is literally yeah, and get slapped right in the face yeah, it's like i want you to slap right on top of the money honestly this sounds stupid in a good way like it slaps yeah Mm. like that beat is stupid yeah it's stupid slaps yeah it's slapping stupid yeah it's slappy yeah <laughs> it's flappy birds <laughs> yeah this is just sloppy yeah. <laughs> slappy joe over yeah. here yeah anyways that's interesting well, what else you got in that tab well uh ai can recognize whether you're a man or a woman based on your iris and we can't you're talking about we as in the humans. Yeah. We still cannot tell based on the iris whether you're a, a man or a woman. But AI can. They are they're light years beyond us. That's interesting. And it's, it's, not, it's not beyond concept. I mean, it makes sense. AI has no distractions. So you give it a task. And it's going to go through multiple millions of of arrangements before it can find a pattern. And it will find a pattern. If there a pattern exists, it will find one. And when it does, and it finds enough consistency of accuracy, then it does. But how will a human do it? Because an iris is so meticulous. How, well, how, what, it's almost like that anteater man. Who's sitting around studying trillions of viruses? Not viruses, yeah. but irises. It's like trying to count the stars. And, but people have to realize there that is a prime example of where the efficiency of AI should be used is in the medical uh, health care sense. They can examine uh, x-rays better than humans. They can find tumors in the x-rays more efficiently than humans. They can probably do laser surgery more efficiently than humans. They can examine, if they can find gender-specific traits in the iris, what else can they find in the iris? So these kind of things, there is a intrinsic value with ai's implementation in our lives but when it crosses the boundary and they can make the ethical choice that goes farther than just association and categorization but to things like abrogation like well you know what we think these are unhealthy humans we should just get rid of them well, yeah especially if like say uh, the ai is looking at my eye and it's like you're a boy or a man and i say no i'm not then what the AI may say, well, then, uh, you know, I can't compute that. And yeah, it may actually be cause we, we actually may be the reason that AI destroys us. Well, what's interesting is also when you just said that it triggered a thought that that means AI is associating the iris with a binary idea of gender also. Because if it says, I see this distinguishment here and it can actually project whatever the individual's gender association was, that means... AI can see a biological segregation between what a male and a female is in a biological object, like an eye. So that means the 
biological object distinguishes itself from another group of biological objects. And AI can see that, which kind of insinuates there may be a literal binary thing, and AI is pointing out that fact. That's what I'm saying. AI will never mix a pit bull with a shih tzu. Because then you'll have a, a, a pit tzu. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I do think there are places for AI, and their efficiency is bar none. It's definitely going to be better than humans, but... That's why I'm going to wear that sweater that we talked about at one time. So you won't be able to assess what gender I am. Oh. Well, what's interesting is last year when China went to the moon, they discovered there are different elements that have never been discovered here on Earth. They coin it Chengi site because it's discovered by the Chinese. But what was more interesting than this new element that was discovered was the amount of helium-3 that's on the surface of the moon. And helium-3 is optimal for nuclear fusion. And what they found out was that there is about 1.1 million metric tons of helium-3 on the surface of the moon, just a few meters deep, 1.1 metric tons. And what they figured out is that it only takes about 25 tons of helium-3 to power the whole entire United States. And there's 1.1 million metric tons of helium-3 on the moon. So you could power the whole United States with 25 tons. So that puts the value of helium-3 on the moon about $3 billion a ton. There's, that's the new gold rush. If this is true, everybody is going to be going to the moon to get this helium-3. And uh, a report came out saying that the Artemis... That Artemis rocket can hold about 25 tons of helium-3 in it on a full load. That's that's, that's that, a lot. Yeah. So in other words, we're going to be rich. Well, no, I think this is like, this is going to be the beginning of... Star Wars. Of Star Cowboys. I mean, this is, this is there's going to be a battle going on for all this helium-3 on the moon. Yeah, literally people are going to, you have Elon Musk, you have NASA, and then Russia, Sputnik, and you're going to have Chinese Zhang Chang. They're all going to be flying towards the moon and shooting each other down. So that way they can't get to it. This is what happened to Pelican Island or whatever it's called, the seagull poop. Yeah. So one full load of the Artemis rocket, which holds about 25 tons, can power the whole entire United States' energy for one year. And that one load would be worth, what, three times 25, so $75 billion. Yeah, but wouldn't this all make the moon smaller? So the moon's going to slowly be getting smaller yeah. and smaller. Yeah, of course, if it gets mined. Yeah, yeah, and then we're not going to have any more Yule tides. On yeah, the ocean. it will probably affect something uh, gravitationally. If the moon gets too small, it won't be able to control these Yule tides. Yeah, I know. I, I don't know how they're... This is all in the, the beginning stages. They know that the helium-3 is there. They know that they could get, with one full load of the Artemis rocket enough helium-3 to power the United States. They know there's about 1.1 metric tons of it on there. So there's enough on there to power the world for probably 10,000 years. But what they don't know is what's going to happen when they slowly deteriorate the moon. Because they're going to start building factories on the moon, some efficient way at some point to extract this helium-3, and they're going to do this on a very efficient means. Well, they're going to have to actually send... Like you have oil rig workers and mine workers here on Earth. They're going to start sending workers to space. Yeah, or this is where they're going to really implement AI and robot technology. And this is where SpaceX really will come into optimal resources, uh, optimal usage, because you will need rockets that land and are reusable. You can't have these just one use off rockets. And I feel like there's always going to be those moon boys who want to get rich quick and they're going to want to go to the moon. Well, you're going to have to have a lot of money to get there in the first place. This is not like crypto. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't just go buy a, a bunch of uh, doji coins and think that, you know, it's going to last forever. Maybe. You, sh you shoot for the moons with doji coin, you're going to land in the toilet. Unless you start pocketing some of that helium three 
Who knows? Maybe when you get a little bit deeper, there's helium. We're four. talking tons here. I mean, what are you going to carry in your hand? Enough to buy a small car. Yeah, that's that's probably right. <laughs> <laughs> but but small by small, I'm talking about foreign. Yeah, like you know, like a Porsche or you know, Crossfire. Well, anyways, I just wanted to let you guys know that it's out there. Helium three on the moon is going to be the next space cowboy. The wild, wild west, because there will be some kind of state of claim on the moon, and there will probably be divisions where there's going to be military divides of the moon, because you know they're not going to let this go. And, and so, yeah, I, I don't. It's interesting. What would happen if somebody dropped a nuke on the moon with helium-3 on there? It'd probably be the best thing that anybody could do, because it would throw it down to the earth. It will just turn into a sun. Maybe. Be helium eight. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, anyways, let you guys know that will be the next thing. Helium three, one point one metric tons on the earth, on the moon, and there will be that will be the next governmental gold rush. It won't be for us. We ain't traveling to the moon, but the governments. This is going to be the next gold rush. Rack them up, rack them up. Anyways, what is on this mysterious black book that you have? Mr. Colleague. Well, I, uh, I have a uh, couple of personal conspiracy theories. I guess you guys can let me know what you think in the comments. It's a theory of mine that the government is causing all of this stuff to happen. This weird stuff with checking your gender fluid and banning natural gas. All this, you know, wars and rumors of wars and all this stuff going on. Because... People, probably specifically the gamer community and Gen Z community, actually started believing that we're living in a simulation. It's not that we could be, but they actually started believing that we are living in a simulation. And then they started shooting people and shooting, sh shooting schools up, shooting gay people, shooting white people, black people. They started shooting other people because they think they're in a video game. So... What the rich people did for fear of their kids getting shot at public school, because it could happen anywhere, they started causing all this weird stuff to happen, like gender fluidity and wars and rumors of wars, banning gas, all this inflation, all this weird stuff. They started doing all this to get people back into reality. It's like, why would you want to vote? Why would you want to do anything except shoot your neighbor if it's all fake anyway? So they're making us really feel the pain to, to ground us back in reality. And that's the theory. So to simplify, what you're saying is simulation theory is false, but because the gamers believed it, it caused this disruption in the normality of society, which then caused a disruption in the elites, uh, propagation of what they're trying to move in this world. So to bring everybody back into reality so that they can continue on their agenda, they cause these false flag actions on purpose to get people to realize that this world is objective and real and not like a video game and pain is real. And by doing that, hopefully waking up the masses and bring them, bringing them back and getting out of this game mentality. Yes. Now, <clears throat> the information of simulation theory is real. Like that's, but it should have stayed in the scholarly world. Unfortunately, it leaked out to the Mario players and the lay people who have no clue what they're doing or talking about. And that's where the, the trouble came. So there was this uh, breach of information. It, it bled into the lay people's community, and it's when people started shooting people. So you're saying you're not denying that simulation theory has a plausibility of being true, but that should be left to the academics. That is correct. Or at, at least people who live mostly in their mind, they're not actually going to go do something stupid because of what they see in their mind. Like, I hear voices, therefore the voices in my head are telling me to hurt somebody, so therefore I have to do it. If you don't have that problem, then yeah, you can think about simulation theory. Like You're not going to actually act what you think. But some people, they don't really think. They just act what they think. And then they hurt people. So you're saying that simulation theory 
does have a plausibility. It's just not useful. Yes. In our applicable world. Yes. And if you start acting like you're in simulation theory, it could pro- you will end up probably hurting people. Yes. This could even be why the government has been pushing aliens now to get people looking up to the sky saying, you know, you can't have both. If we're in a simulation, then you shouldn't be afraid of aliens because they're all part of the program too. But if aliens are real and they could actually do some damage and hurt you and all this stuff, then the simulation has, you know, who cares about simulation anymore? It's like, I got to live out in my life here right now because this is real. So again, it grounds you into reality. All of this stuff. And they hit every angle. I'm not clear. So you're saying, are you projecting that the concepts of UFOs and aliens that are being propagated now is still a part of this wake up? Yeah, it could be. And again, this is all a theory. I'm not saying this is what I actually believe, but it's an interesting theory that I've been pondering with my brain. Do you believe aliens and UFOs could be real by themselves outside of just an illusion or an analogy? Yeah, I think they may or may not be. I, I don't really know. I've never seen one myself. I mean, I've seen some weird stuff, but I don't know if that's the government or if that's an alien. I, I cannot say. But, you know, I have another different theory that would oppose this theory I just presented. I have a different theory on aliens themselves. Okay, what's that? That they're future humans. That humans have evolved into only having three fingers and bigger heads because they got smarter uh shorter and weaker because you know everything does things for them in the future and this would be why the aliens can't destroy us humans because they'd be killing themselves in the future the grandfather clock so when aliens uh come and visit the earth uh they're actually just going back in time and basically it's like school buses and they're probably full of kids and they're just watching us like a history channel and uh, if they abduct one, it's basically doing a science experiment. Like we have, we dissect frogs to see where we as humans came from. And they're dissecting humans to see where they came from. Well, that's really interesting. I guess we'll have to look more into that. Hopefully Alice brings more info, puts more stuff in that wonderful black book of yours. Whatever is hidden inside there. She's always trying to get in there, get into my stuff. Yeah. See, that itself brings its own theory. Is she really trying to get into us, or is she really already in us? Or are we trying to get into her? Well, I have never actually seen Alice, have you? Mum's the word. Yeah, I always get these messages. I get like little video uh, messages also through my email, but I've never actually met her in person, have you? Um. No, but yeah, she does send me a lot of pictures. Yeah. I always wonder if we're Alice. Maybe Alice too big. I don't know if people are familiar with the castle doctrine, but basically it's the idea that you have your house as a castle and you have a right to defend it. And so they put out these, the law, it's called the castle doctrine, which is a law established. They give citizens rights to defend their house because it's their castle. Now, Indiana has a controversial castle doctrine, which not only does it give a right to defend it against intruders, but it also gives the right to shoot police officers if they come in and the citizen who owns that house, the castle. I heard about this. Yeah, that deems it unlawful or forceful. They can shoot police officers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if, if you're catching a fast break, then you can slap the glass. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But that's if you don't get shot first, I guess. Like, if you're actually trying to jump and slap the glass on your neighbor's uh, window, then yeah, you may get, you may get mummed. Yeah, peeking in that window, pow, pow. Uh, nobody now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was interesting because, you know, you always get the police officer. They just bum in. You see these videos. They just bum rush into somebody's house, freeze, and then they just start shooting, pow, 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 and they get away with it. But now, I guess in Indiana... Cops better think twice. You come in, they're going to start shooting at you. And they, and you know, they'll, that gives confidence to the homeowner because they'll like, I have legal precedent. I could go to court and they could say I was in the right to shoot the police officer. Or one of these things we could do like uh, where those ancient Israelites did where instead of uh, mutilating a, a lamb and then throwing all of its blood all over your door, 
you could just take one of those blue flags and slap it on your door and maybe the cops will pass over your house. I don't think so. It, it might just be fool enough to work. Yeah, I think you're fooling around. I don't fool around with cops. Yeah, I don't they've, either. They've tried to fool around with me, but I, I told them no, no. Yeah. All I'm saying is I think it's fair game. If cops want to just bum rush into people's house, and you know, some of this stuff, like there's stories out there with people, the cops making horrendous mistakes. They actually go to the wrong house. They end up killing innocent people. And and the citizens have no recourse because they they what are they gonna do? But in Indiana, you bust in their house, they're gonna blast away. And they have legal precedent. They don't have to fear that they're gonna go to jail. You're gonna get flacked. Yeah. So, I mean, I can see the con to that too. You know, it, it's going to make the police officers a lot more careful to do their job, which means, you know, there might be some circumstances where they need to bum rush in, but they're not because clearly they're going to get blasted. I want to get snubbed. Yeah. It's stouted. You're going to get pigeonholed. Yeah. You're going to get smoked. And my daughter always, whenever me and my daughter play uh, this Nazi zombie game, uh, Shout out to Call of Duty. She always says things like, she'll be shooting zombies and she'll be like, oh yeah, you want to smoke with us? You want to smoke with us? And she'll be like, hey daddy, I think they want to smoke with us. He's like, oh, right, let's give them a cigarette. You they know? want that smoke. You know, sometimes friends want to smoke with you and you just sometimes want to bum a cigarette. Well, this uh, article here says, the Indiana legislator enacted a law that makes it legal under certain circumstances for citizens to use deadly force against a law enforcement officer who unlawfully enters the citizen's home or motor vehicle. The law involves Indiana's Castle Doctrine. The Castle Doctrine is a part of an American common law derived from e the English system. Under English law, a man's home was his castle. In the home, under British rule and in present day America, individual rights are. At their highest, the rights of the people to be secure in their persons, house, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. As the U.S. Supreme Court has reiterated, the physical entry of a home is the chief evil against the wording of the Fourth Amen Amendment is directed. That is what's going on with that. It's Indiana Code 35 dash 41 dash 3 dash 2 <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember PayPal <laughs> uh, shout out to those guys yeah, all our old schoolers and the wallet grabbers <laughs> honestly I'm not against it I do think that we should keep the police enforcement uh, accountable also they shouldn't just have free reign to do whatever and clearly, they abuse their powers. I'm not saying all cops do it, but it does happen. And when that abuse happens, just like the police decide to say, we couldn't help it, even though they shot that little kid with a bag of Skittles, we thought it was a gun. And they get immunity for it. Well, a citizen will never get that right. But if you bust in our homes and you got no papers, you got nothing, we're going to bust you down. And if we have a legal precedent to do it, that's going to make more accountability for law enforcement and it's going to keep them more on their toes to make sure your paper's in order, make sure everything's right, and then do something. So actually, I don't see it as a bad thing, but I know a lot of cops, they're definitely against it. I'm sure. They used to be able to pick on people their own size. Now they can't. They At least their own pistol. Yeah, I know. Like Pete. My prayer is this, that they go to the law like a therapist. I would just hate to be labeled as a power abuser or a power offender. It's like like have a power you, stretcher? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, like, have you ever offended power before? Have you ever abused power? I don't it's think like, I've ever think abused so. abstract. No, but you've probably abused tract. Yeah, maybe a pro tractor. <laughs> 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 well, that's just English. Well, anyways, now you guys know about the castle doctrine in Indiana. What else you got in your tab? I'm going to try not to abuse power right now. Um, Hard power is knocking. No, I know. A lot of people, they just abuse power and they take it for granted. 
but uh, they, they abuse can't. love, they abuse children. Uh, that that's tracked. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. real. So, um, on January seventh of twenty twenty two, there was three men in New Mexico going through a one of those big dumpsters of uh, J C Penny. They were dumpster diving. And they heard some weird noise in there as they're, you know, digging through trash. They're like going through, seeing if there's anything valuable. They heard something uh, like a cat. So they went and they uh, got this garbage bag. So I'm like, that's where the noise was coming from. And uh, so like, where's this cat at? Where's this cat? They thought it was just like hiding in the trash. But anyway, they pull a bag out, garbage bag, <clears throat> and they open it up and they didn't find a cat. It wasn't a cat. It was actually a baby boy. So someone just took out the trash, and oh, that's it. Mum's the word. Yeah, that's and uh, unfortunately, the sad part is that's not very uncommon. I've heard a lot of stories like that. Well, they notified the authorities post haste. Well, I'm sure. I mean, that's just one of those weird situations. I'm out here to get some goodies. Well, it was wrapped in a swaddling cloth, so it was at least warm. But, you know, it happens. I mean, we all think we would never get put in a situation where we think we would do something like that, but the mind is a crazy thing. It gets pushed to the limit at some point. You will do irrational things, things that you never thought you would do, because you just, I mean, you, you lose your mind. You can't take it anymore. But I did see there is these things they are starting to put up now in cities. It basically looks like a like a locker, but it's specifically made for stuff like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And where, where people, they want they can't handle their parents. Like, don't throw it in the dumpster. Bring it over here. And it's basically this thing you open up. It's like a bank vault or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you, it. You, uh, it tells you what to do. And you wrap the kid in there, you put it in there, and immediately it notifies somebody to come there. But then you close it, and it locks. And I assume it has some kind of oxygen system in there. <laughs> And uh, somebody comes and picks up the kid. So, yeah, if you guys are struggling with something like that, at least go to one of those drop-off boxes. I almost wonder what happens to those kids because I know the Russians and Germans, you know, used to experiment on kids, assuming they're not doing it still today. But um, this could be America's way of, you know, taking our kids and just experimenting on them. It's like we don't know what this kid's name is. We have no information. So it's a perfect candidate to... Uh, have fun with our little experiments. Well, I'm sure in today's day and age, DNA testing is going to go back to a birth certificate or something. Yeah, maybe, but it's like, who would know that except the uh, government who now has this free That's baby? That's true. I mean, on the, fr on the back end, nobody would know unless that woman said something, but then they could just say she's making it all up and then they could oh, yeah. delete all the papers and everything. Yeah, no, not only that, it's like, if the woman says, I don't agree with you doing that, it's like, then why'd you give us your kid? Well, she wouldn't even know. It's not like they're going to tell her anyway. I don't know. Yeah. Well, anyways, yeah, I guess that is a theory. They could be doing that, you know, for stem cell research or whatever. Yeah, they could be doing all kinds of things. Yeah. Tickling lobes. Well, there is this other thing that's going on correlating with that new word from Stanford you were talking about, we can no longer use America. There's this article from Forbes that says, that says the trouble with texting, cancel culture comes to work, seeking out passive aggressive emojis apparently not only is there a group of words a whole plethora of words that we're not supposed to say because they're passive aggressive apparently or culturally appropriate emojis are on the cancel list too like the thumbs up sign is very passive aggressive most gen z say they do not like the thumbs up sign it's brilliant i never would have thought we would have reached such heights as a society. Well, this list shows the thumbs up sign is number one. Number two is the heart sign. Number three is the okay sign. Number four is the check mark. Number five is the poo sign. Well, that's offensive here at Toilet Time. Poo slingers. Number six is the loud crying face. Number seven is the monkey eye cover. Number eight is the clapping hands. Number nine is the kiss mark. And number 10 is the grimacing face. And all of these are stated as passive-aggressive emojis that should be canceled. 
according to a new report from Prospectus Global. Now, <clears throat> is this a global thing? Well, or cuz Samsung obviously isn't going to allow this. Uh, that's Korean and they're probably not on the page with all this weird stuff that America's been doing the past year or so. I said in a survey of 2016 to 29 year olds who sent out about 80 emojis per week, cancel culture is coming for emojis. And the people who send them, the thumbs up emoji rated number one for being uncool is at the top of this list. Here are the top 10 emojis, and I told you what there are. While 22% of the respondents report that they use multiple emojis in a text message to make it clearer, a new poll from Tel Aviv, so this is in Israel, University, says that emojis actually make you look less powerful. So Gen Zs can uh, yeet all over each other, but... When it comes to saying a thumbs up, that's bad. No cap. Yeah, basically. I guess there's this report coming out of Tel Aviv University, so in Israel, that it shows that the people who use this, whoever you're trying to portray some type of influence over, you're portraying a weakness. Like it's passive aggressive. It's not even actually aggressive. It's almost like innuendively aggressive. Like, But I don't know how a thumbs up is being, and I think this is just all that, I honestly, I could say a bunch of things here, but I still use the thumbs up. To me, it's just a quick, simple thing. I don't want to write out stuff. I don't want to type okay. I don't want to say okay, A-Y. I don't want to say all right. I just put a thumbs up and go on by my day. It's just a quick, fast thing. Who cares? But I guess other people may think that you're being lazy. Maybe you don't care about them. That's why you're putting a thumbs up. You don't spend the time to write it out. I was like, who's analyzing all this? This is just a text message. If you really care, you know what I think? Call me. Pick up the phone. But the people who probably complain about this are the same people who probably don't even want to talk on the phone. Nobody wants to talk on the phone anymore. They want to use all these shortcuts like uh, NGL or something. Not going to lie or on God or something. Say less. I just thought it was interesting. I don't see why anybody, you know, they're accusing the people who are using these emojis of being passive aggressive. I actually think the people who are putting this out that think this is passive aggressive, actually that's a passive aggressive attack. It's like, are you that weak? That you feel threatened by an emoji. It's literally a caricature. And you feel threatened. Your identity is getting harmed here. Is it the little devil face emoji? No, that one's okay. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Well, then, yeah. It's just a grim face. Oh, yeah, that's grimacing. Yeah, the grim face. But anyways, I, don't, I just want you guys to know that thumbs up is thumbs down. It's a going out. What style? Thanks to Generation Alpha and Z. You guys be safe out there. Just, just be careful. You know, watch your sex, and just make sure that people aren't sending you these grimacing, god awful uh, thumbs ups or whatever. Hey Alexa, what's your favorite emoji? Sorry, I don't know that. He doesn't know. Oh, that's it. Well, anyways, that's all we have time for today. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. It was a jam-packed episode, as always. Alice, A-L-C-E, gives her words and regards. That's why you don't abuse power. Now, do you spell rough R-U-F-F or R-O-U-G-H? It depends on if you're Clifford or if you're Popeye. Or your proclivities. Yes. Excellent. If you're Popeye, it would probably be a GH. If you're Clifford, it'd be FF. Yeah, growth hormones. Yeah. Oh. Growth hormones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we'll thank you guys for tuning in. We know you guys love the show and we love bringing it to you guys. And until the next one, keep those toilets clean. Keep that smear off the back of the bowl <laughs> and keep those toilets fresh. We'll be back. See you guys next time in the toilet zone. Shout out to Arnold. <laughs> <laughs>